If you're a fan of retro games, you'll probably know that some retro game cartridges have a small button battery inside of them that provides power to a memory chip that lets you save your game progress. It's the technology that made possible all-time classics like The Legend of Zelda, Super Metroid and David O'Leary's Total Soccer 2000, plus of course those obscure hidden gems like the Pokemon games. Don't sleep on those. But batteries eventually, inevitably, they die. So how long can you expect out of them? How long is the lifespan of the saved games in one of these cartridges? How long before your treasured memories of David O'Leary completely vanish into the ether? Yes, once the battery in one of these carts is finished, so is your save game. And in fact, the game might refuse to work altogether unless you replace the battery. So what is the life expectancy? Now we've definitely got to be talking at the very least two or three decades of life for most games, history has already proved that. These are, I think, the oldest battery backed up save games that I've got lying around, let's check if these both still work. So my Japanese copy of Super Mario World is still absolutely fine. This game came out in 1990 originally, but according to the date code on the battery inside this copy, this is from 1992, but still 31 years isn't bad at all, and it probably means that newer Super NES games are going to be just fine too. Yes, your Jimmy Houston's Bass Tournament save is probably safe for the moment. And it seems like F1 Race is fine too. This came out in 1991, but the date code inside this says 1996. That does seem very late, but it does match up with some info I found online. Slightly disappointing, but well, this battery has still lasted 27 years. Not bad again, especially when you consider that Game Boy games are known for having less reliable batteries than other cartridges. This is all fine, but well, how far back can we go? What's the oldest example of this technology that I can find? Well, this here is the very first game to ever use this sort of button cell battery backup, Marita Shogi for the Nintendo Famicom, released in April 1987. Obscure but not rare or expensive, thankfully, and it really is an attractive colour, isn't it? Like it's been cast out of Werther's Originals, but let's, let's give this a try. And yes, the battery is still absolutely fine, and it is actually pretty clever how this works. Shogi is a traditional Japanese game of the chess family, and this auto saves as you're playing it. You can just turn it off at any point, and when you switch it back on again, it will bring you straight back to where you were. Really nicely done for a console game from 1987. Shame I don't really know much about how to play Shogi. I should probably point out that yes, this is a Famicom game, but that is the console that became the NES in the West, and the circuitry in this cartridge is really close to what was used in NES games like The Legend of Zelda or Final Fantasy, which came out not long after. So this is still going strong after, well, 36 years maybe, but how much longer has this got left? What is the total expected lifespan of this or any other game? Well, this is where the science comes in. So I'm going to have to open this cartridge up first of all, and a clamp seems to be the only reliable way of opening these Famicom carts. It's really not easy, but eventually I get there and we can see the board inside. This is the battery that provides the power and the date code on there proves that this was made in March 1987, so it really has done well a full 36 years. And this is the SRAM chip that stores the data, and that stands for Static Random Access Memory. You've probably heard of RAM before, but SRAM requires a very small amount of power to store data, so small that a tiny battery like this can keep it powered for a long time. How long? Well, if I can measure the current this uses and divide that into the capacity of the battery, I should be able to get an idea. I'm going to need to break the circuit and detach one battery connection to do this, but with that done, not very neatly, let's get to measuring. Now this is the absolute edge of what this fairly cheap multimeter can do, the very bottom of its range, so I'm not expecting much accuracy. 
That said, I will get some sort of reading and it's coming up with maybe 0.6 microamps or 600 nanoamps and that is fairly close to what I should expect according to what I've found online, so that is good. There is another way though that I can measure this tiny current with this multimeter, so that might help to confirm it. If I put a 1 mega ohm resistor in a series with the load or in between the memory chip and the battery, the voltage drop in millivolts that I measure across it will be equivalent to the current draw of the circuit in nanoamps. Yeah, that might not be massively intuitive, but trust me, the maths on that do seem to add up. So if I can get a good readout of this, it's about 0.45 volts, 450 millivolts, or 450 nanoamps. Now that is a bit different to the 600 that I got before, but not wildly different. It's in the same order of magnitude, and it does give me some hope that I'm in the right ballpark. Whilst I'm here, I might as well measure the other two as well, starting out with Super Mario World. And that came out as maybe fractionally less than Marita Shogi, but that difference might just be noise. Still though, it is encouragingly in the same ballpark. And what about F1 race on the Game Boy? You might notice the smaller battery on this one. That could well be important. But aside from that, I had a real hard time measuring anything with this cartridge. I just got so many different readings. I'm sure a lot of it was totally random noise. It's maybe hovering around 0.2 microamps or 150 to 200 nanoamps, something like that, but it might just be asking way too much of this multimeter and my methods to say for sure. This one, though, it might actually be lower than the other two. That would make sense, but I will get onto that. Okay, I've got my measurements, but how does that translate to battery life? Well, let's calculate. So, both Marita Shogi and Super Mario World have CR2032 batteries in them, which have a capacity of about 220 milliamp hours. If we split the difference on the readings I got and call the power consumption half a microamp, well, that battery should last 440,000 hours, which sounds like a lot, but it must be in the right area. There's 8,760 hours in a year, so 440,000 divided into 8,760 equals just over 50 years. The lower readings I got from Super Mario World might make that even longer, maybe 55 or 60 years, which does sound pretty heroic for a game save. And what about the Game Boy game? And that is interesting because it has that much smaller battery. The CR1616 in this cartridge has a capacity of just 16 milliamp hours, about a quarter of the bigger batteries. If my crappy measurements are anything like close to reality, then that means with a current draw of 0.2 microamps, we'll get a life of about 34 years for the Game Boy save. Quite a lot less, but that does seem to tally with anecdotal evidence that these don't last so long. But here you might point out that batteries are a bit more complicated than that. They lose capacity even when they're not in use, self-discharge. Eventually they can corrode and totally self-destruct. That's true, but these are lithium manganese dioxide batteries and they do have just about the longest shelf life and lowest self-discharge rate of any sort of commonly available battery technology. They lose perhaps only half a percent of capacity per year and they're not very prone to corroding either if they're handled properly. If we add a half a percent per year discharge on top of what we've already worked out, well, that means about 40 to 45 years of life for the Famicom and Super NES cartridges, and for the Game Boy cart, that takes it down to around 30, maybe. Is there another way of corroborating this? Well, maybe with voltage. As a battery is used up, the voltage it puts out drops, giving you a clue to its life left. Both Super Mario and F1 Race were about 3 volts when I measured them, which isn't that helpful. But Marita Shogi, the oldest game by about 5 years, that was 2.84. The discharge voltage curve on these sorts of batteries is pretty flat. They put out about 3 volts for most of their lives, but as they get towards the end, the voltage does start to drop. 2.85 volts puts the Marita Shogi battery at maybe this point on the curve. Not dead yet, but on the wane. 
and that maybe would match up with about a 40 year lifespan. So that's what I'm going to go with, that's my final conclusion, 40 to 45 years for NES or Super NES games, maybe fractionally longer for the Super NES games, and about 30 years for Game Boy games with those smaller batteries. It's got to be at least 36 years for that Famicom game, obviously, as we've seen, and I suspect the battery will last a bit longer than that, but probably not loads more. I'm really not confident about my Game Boy measurements, but if that battery has lasted 27 years, well, the power consumption must be lower, though perhaps not low enough that that battery will last as long as the home console equivalents. Now, you might find all sorts of problems with my methodology, a big one being my multimeter. It's just not designed for measuring these small currents accurately. I don't think any general purpose multimeter is. It seems like you need quite specialised equipment to measure these tiny, tiny currents that these SRAM chips draw. The kind of gear that I just don't have access to, would you believe I'm not actually an electronics engineer and never will be? Alas, I have little more than vintage wine and memories. The only other proper attempt to answer this question that I could find is this post on Atari Age from someone with the handle Purr. They seem a bit more optimistic than me, mainly because they estimate the current draw of SRAM chips to be a bit lower than what I measured. I don't know where they got this info from, but they seem pretty confident that they know what they're talking about, so it might well be true. I'm sure there will be people watching this with cartridges newer than what I've shown that are already very dead. I'm sure that's not uncommon. There is, of course, though, way more that goes into this. Temperature can make a huge difference, how a cartridge has been stored, or just manufacturing variations in the batteries. Some will just give up sooner. But I'm sure there's also quite a bit of a variation in the cartridge hardware, too. Different SRAM chips will have different characteristics. If the chip in a particular cartridge uses even a little bit more power, well, that's going to mount up over the years. And there's many other systems that I haven't considered that also use cartridge batteries, the Mega Drive, the N64, I think some Game Boy Advance games, they're probably going to have different characteristics again. I think some Game Boy games did also have larger batteries too, but well, if this generates any interest, maybe I could do a follow-up. So do let me know in the comments what you think about this. If you have a Game Boy game older than 26 years that still has a working battery, that would be really interesting. You can tell the age by the date code that's usually stamped on the battery if you open up the cartridge a month and a year, but also any thoughts in general would be very welcome. So this is where I sign off, I think. Thank you, as always, to my patrons. Thank you very much. Your pledges do help me to buy things like obscure Famicom games and the clamps to open them up with. If anyone else would like to join in, that would be absolutely superb. There is a link below, and I will say thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.